Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming September of 2016 Premier Auction. And I have a very interesting, unusual Walther pistol here today. So the Walther Company had actually made their first pistols in 1908. Prior to that, they'd been a sporting rifle manufacturer and a fairly small one. Well, their pistols became fairly popular, and in particular, the Walther Model 4 was made in large numbers for the German military during World War I. Now, I don't want to get into the whole history of Walther and this series of pistols leading up to this one, uh, because Othias over at Sea and Arsenal actually has a really good video on the Model 4 that covers a bunch of that material. So if you're interested, check that out and come back here, and we'll continue talking about this guy. This is a Model 6. Now, the Model 4 was the, the, the military and police 32 caliber Walther pistol. Small service pistol, kind of typical European design at the time. The Model 5 was a, a 25 caliber pocket pistol. And then the Model 6 was an idea for a new military service handgun. These were introduced in 1915 because, basically, the German government kind of liked the 9mm Parabellum cartridge. They were using the PO8 Luger as their standard issue pistol. Uh, during World War I, they started using C96 broom handle Mausers in 9mm Parabellum as a substitute standard pistol. And Walther saw this. They weren't, they weren't stupid. They saw what was going on. And they figured, ah, the government really wants this more powerful 9mm Parabellum cartridge. I bet we can do that. And they took their Model 4 design and scaled it up, called it the Model 6, and chambered it for 9mm Parabellum. It is, however, still a simple blowback pistol. Now, blowback 9mm are certainly out there. This is one of them. There are the, well, I hate to use this example, but the high point is a blowback 9mm. Now, 9mm Parabellum is a pretty powerful cartridge for a blowback handgun. The only thing that keeps the, a blowback gun safe is the spring pressure and the mass of the slide acting together to prevent the bolt from opening, uh, or the slide from opening, too early when pressure is high enough that the cartridge case will explode. So you need a lot of mass and a decently heavy spring. Now, some of these guns have been made. Uh, for example, the Astra 400 series is in 9mm Parabellum and it's blowback and it works just fine. Uh, there, there are some other pistols and still to this day, especially the less expensive uh, side of the market, has a number of blowback 9mm. But they never work all that well. This really is the ragged edge of realistic capacity for a blowback action in a pistol. So Walther tried it. Um, they figured this would be the, the cheap way to offer a 9mm pistol to the German army. They wouldn't have to redesign a locked breech action and get all new tooling and everything. They could just take what they already had, scale it up a little bit, and make it fit. So these weighed, interestingly, these things weigh 34 ounces compared to 19 ounces for the Model 4 in 32 ACP. So that gives you a bit of a difference of the weight requirements changing to actually accommodate safely this larger cartridge. They have an eight round single stack magazine. They disassemble just the same way, which we'll look at in a minute, as the number four. They offered them to the military starting in 1915 and they were pretty soundly rejected. Uh, the military didn't think that a blowback nine millimeter was a good idea. They wanted a locked breech gun. So ultimately only a little over a thousand of these were manufactured. This is one of the higher serial numbers. It's number 1030. Uh, they didn't just start at a thousand. There are lots of three digit serial numbers recorded as well. Uh, so these turned into really quite rare pistols. Uh, by 1917, they stopped manufacturing them completely. They were never formally adopted by the military, but a number of them, possibly a lot of them, did actually see service as officers' private purchase uh, carry pistols because, hey, well, it would have been a lot cheaper than a Luger or a Broomhandle Mauser, and it was using that same more powerful cartridge. So pretty cool. These are one of the bigger pistols that Walther, well, the biggest pistol Walther made in this whole series. They ran from number one to the Model 9 with the number six here kind of in the middle. Um, very rare to find today. So let, let's take a closer look and take it apart. Mechanically, this really is just a larger Model 4 pistol. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the markings on it. Carl Walther, of course, Waffenfabrik, Zelda Mellis. Uh, serial number is here on the trigger guard. There's a, a Crown N. Uh, commercial proof mark there, one on the barrel, one on the frame, there's I think one on the slide somewhere as well. On the opposite side we have Selbstlad Pistol, which is self-loading pistol, caliber 9mm, Walther patent and a Walther banner, pretty typical markings there. We have a Germany, that's an old import mark that someone had to put on there. 
and then there is a manual safety lever with a 180 degree throw here at the back of the frame. So that's the fire mode, flip it around, that's the safe mode. The magazine has a heel release, as do so many of these style of pistols, and we have an eight round single stack magazine, which, you know, that kind of looks like a P38 mag, and I'm pretty sure it was Walther that made the P38. I'm sure there's no connection there. Then disassembly is done by this uh, front barrel shroud, which holds the recoil spring in place. The recoil spring is located over the barrel. To remove this, we're going to push in and rotate it about 90 degrees. There we go. So there is a bayonet style catch right here on the shroud that holds it in place. We can then pull out the recoil spring. And once that's out, the slide comes back and lifts right off the pistol. So these are hammer-fired pistols. Uh, so hammer, of course, is at the back of the frame. We've got our sear and trigger bar there, and that will release the hammer to go forward, just like that. So firing pin is located here, uh, built into the slide. Again, this is a really typical design. Uh, it is a spring-loaded firing pin, which is a good thing and you've just got this milled cutout to give the hammer space to work. That's really all there is to the Walther Model 6. It's a very conventional, standard style of pistol, just uh, bigger than you would normally expect for this mechanism. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Not very often we get to take a look at a Model 6 Walther. They are one of the scarcer ones, and one of the bigger ones. Makes them kind of interesting. So, if you'd like to own this yourself, Put it next to, say, your P38 or your Walther Model 4. Well, check out the description text uh, below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this pistol, where you can check out uh, their pictures and their description and place a bid online or over the phone, or come up here to Rock Island and uh, join the auction live. Thanks for watching.